Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and today I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut Bear Paul's blocks with my AccuQuilt die cutting system. <laughs> different fabrics and they are approximately 9 inches by 21 inches they are fat 8's and I have noticed that when people cut fat 8's that they are slightly smaller than 9 inches and that's important because I'm going to need to cut particular fabric sizes and I want to make sure that they are the correct size but anyway I Figured that I can get approximately 66 inch blocks from these fabrics and I may be able to cut more. I'm just doing approximate. Uh, I will have some extra pieces left over when I'm cutting and then I'm going to cut those into extra two and a half inch squares that I'm going to use in the sashing for my prints. So the first thing I want to do is on my die cutting system, I can cut up to six layers. So what I want to do is take six of my fat eights and I'm going to just count them out first three so one two three so here's six and I'm just going to move these out so with the die cutting system, it's not that you will never need to use your rotary cutters. It's that you're going to prep your material so that you can better utilize it for less waste. As well as, I want to make sure that I'm not putting pieces that are super large on my die, making larger scraps that will be tossed. So what I want to do for my first cuts after I kind of line this fabric up and remember all the fabric has not been squared up it's just been pressed. I do use starch as well and so now that I have it sort of kind of lined up I want to just pick a line and I'm just going to pick 10 and go over just a little in case some of my pieces are not long enough and I'm going to cut uh, some squares. What I want to cut for this piece is I want to cut my half square triangles. And so I'm going to talk about those dies and why I'm cutting it that size when I get there. But for my half square triangles, I need my pieces to be at least seven inches. So I am going to get some materials here. And again, I'm just going to go over like a quarter. It's better to be too much than not have enough. And I'm going to cut that. I'm going to slide this back. I'm going to rotate this. Note that this right here is my salvage when I run it through my cutter. So therefore, I want this end to be at my belly button. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just rotate. Put this back on 10 at least. And then I'm going to cut again just to get my approximate size squares. So I'm going to do that to all of my print pieces. I need a new blade as well. I keep forgetting to change it. But I'm going to do this to all of my pieces. This is the part that actually goes against the belly button. And so I'm just going to slide that over. I'm going to continue to do that with my entire stack here. And when I come back, I'll show you my next step. And remember, these are approximate cuts. They are not exact. So it's not like I'm having to worry about exact cuts here. 
So here I have cut my seven inch squares off of my sets. And now what I want to do is cut a four and a half inch strip. I need my piece to be at least 13 inches long. So I'm making sure that I have a piece that's really close to what I need. So I'm going to be cutting squares and I can see in here that these pieces are not really lined up if you can see in there. So I need four and a half inch squares off of my die. So what I'm going to do is just line up here and cut five and a quarter, maybe five and a half. One, two, three, four, five. And then that way I've got leeway on my die. I know that I'll now have a straight edge over here and I'll capture anything that's short on the other side. So I'm going to cut that. And in addition, I'm going to cut this into two and a half inch squares. A uh, two and a half inch squares is kind of a staple you can use anywhere. And so I am going to be cutting the rest of this into two and a half inch squares, although it's a large amount. I'm going to be using some of them for sashing when I'm making my blocks. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put my extra pieces up there. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and maybe cut this into a two and three quarters inch strip. And then I could use the rest of it, if any is left over, in my string quilt. So maybe I'll just go ahead and do that. And I need a blade bat. So I'll put this into my string containers. All of the extra pieces from cutting my seven, my approximate seven inch squares are also going to go into my string container. So again, I'm just going to cut these into two and a half inch squares. And then these are going to be my four and a half inch squares. And so I'm going to do that to all of my fabrics and I'll be right back. So here I have all of my approximate cuts from all of my fabrics here. And I also have my extra pieces that I'm going to be cutting uh, from the two into two and a half inch squares. These are just extra pieces for right now that I, I will be using in sash. So I'm going to just move these pieces out of the way. They're actually ready to be cut. I'm going to place this on this on top of my longer strip set so that I know which end goes to my belly button when I'm cutting. We'll talk about that later. And I'm going to go ahead and start cutting my background pieces for my bear paw. And let's see. Let me just back up for a second. For those that don't know what a bear paw block is, I don't have one made. <laughs> so I have just put one on this piece of paper here. But basically this is where I'm going to be putting a four and a half inch square or four inch finish square and then these are going to be my two inch finish half square triangles and i need to have four of those for each block so i'm needing that cut out of my print as well as my background and then i also need a two and a half inch square that's cut out of my background so i have this fabric here and i need to cut for my project I need 240 half square triangles to make at least 60 blocks. So what I'm going to do is I need for my die, and I'm going to show you that later, I need squares that are approximately seven and a half. So this is an extra strip that's already cut to seven and a half. I need a total of four of those. So I'm just going to take this strip here and do that. Just make sure it's lined up straight here. And um, this is not anything that has to be perfect. I'm just going to line up my bottom with the seven inch line. And then I'm going to cut at 14 and 21. And my fabric goes almost to 28. So, and that's where my last cut's going to be. So now I have three strips here that I just cut for a total of four. 
So now that I have these strips, I'm not even going to cross cut these because they are long full strips. On my other ones, I had strips that had varying lengths. So I am going to just cut these four all at one time, fan folding back across my die. And I'm going to actually do two at a time because I'm going to fan fold back and forth for three fan folds. And then I will cut at that point. So I will just take these and temporarily put them on top here. And then I'm going to also need with this 60 squares if I'm making 60 blocks in my background. So in order for me to do that, I need two strip sets that are eight inches to cut this in half as well. And again, that's all the cutting that I'm going to do. Okay, so we're now getting ready to cut. And technically, everything that you cut can be cut from an eight inch cube. And I will list links in the description box for everything that I'm using today. What I like to do is that I've been using the Go system for a long time and I do have dies that cut multiples. When you get the cubes, they only cut a limited number of pieces. Like it will only cut one four and a half inch square. It would only cut four two and a half inch squares at a time and so on. So what I like to do is I also supplement my other dies. So if I need a lot of two and a half inch squares, I have a die here that has nine each two and a half inch squares and it is number 55059 and I can cut um, nine of these squares at one time. And that's why I was cutting my pieces the size that I was cutting. So you would cut your pieces the size that it would take for you to use just a single die if you're using just a single die out of the box. So I will make sure that I list all of the die boards or everything that I can find where you can cut a two inch square, a four inch finished square, as well as a two inch finished half square triangle. So you can make a decision on how you want to purchase dies if you need to, or if you already have the eight inch cube, you can use that as well. Now, normally you're not supposed to stack your dies, but I'm just gonna sit that there for a minute. I will be using the four inch square die. Uh, four and a half inch square finishes at four inches. And that came from out of this box here. So now for our background pieces, I need 240 half square triangles and I have these boards here that I can just lay seven inch square or in this case, I'm going to be putting my seven and a half inch strip. And now I'm looking for the label on the side of my board because that's where I want my length of grain to go. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to stack up my seven inch squares and they are approximate seven inches. Long as they are larger than six and a half inches, this will work. And what I'm going to do is use these lines on my board that I have drawn to line up my fabric. And remember, I also got this salvage that I need to make sure that I bypass. So I'm going to go down just a little bit further on that side. So with the ghost system, you can cut up to six layers at a time. So I have two pieces there. I'm going to fold this back on itself. So that's why I didn't have to cut this into all of those little squares. And I want to get my edges over as close as I can, lined up that way. And I can see I'm still under my die blade over there. And then because that's only four layers, I'm going to fold back one more time for six layers. Now, this right here is how I want to run my die through because I've got the label here for my belly button. If you run it through the other way, your length of grain, you run the risk 
of your pieces not being big enough. And then this is where, because my fabric is going in and I've got excess hanging off to this edge over here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off so I don't have to worry with that. And now I'm going to put on my 10 inch mat and we can run this through the cutter. And then when you cut, you just want to rub your hand over to release some of the static electricity so your pieces don't come off with the mat or go sliding off the mat, falling off. And then I just pull it to myself and just pull it down like that. So then I also flip it and rotate it. And then I just lay it on my system so the next time that I use it, my mat has already been rotated. You want to rotate your mat so that you get equal wear and it will make your mat last a lot longer. And so then I have all of these. So let's see, I cut 12 half square triangles on this one die times six. So I just cut 72 half square triangles in one pass. And that is why I like this system. So now I'm going to remove any strings I have and we are going to line this back up again. And we're gonna cut our strip again and we're going to alternate and this time I'm only needing to go back but I can cut some extra ones I just cut extra pieces I just like having extra pieces if I come up with some more fabric where I can make more blocks I already got it done but this will cover enough to get me another four half square triangles in essence that's eight because I have two fabrics here and again we're gonna run that through again rub slide off your mat flip it and rotate it So I just showed you how to cut two strips of the half square triangles. I need to cut two more strips, so I'll do that and I'll come back. All right, so I have cut all of my background half square triangles and now we're gonna go ahead and cut our half square triangles from the print since we have this die out. So I'm going to pull in the pieces that need to be cut with the seven inch die. So these are my 20 fabrics that I have. I already have them stacked in sets of six. And the reason why I cut these into squares as opposed to the other ones is because technically for each fabric, I only needed one seven inch square. And so that way I wasn't wasting any fabric. I actually put that extra fabric into my strings container from my fat eights. So now I'm just going to center this over the board just making sure that everything is covered. And then we're just going to send these through. And I do like adjust my mat just a little bit. I put more of the mat over to this side. More of it is seeable or viewable over there so that I can use cut into different areas on my mat as I'm going through as well. And then we're also going to rotate and flip and then I can just peel off my excess and I have my half square triangles and I do need 
240 of these half square triangles as well. It's just that they're made from different fabrics. And I'm going to do that with all of my squares that I have here. And when I'm done, I will come back. All right, so I'm done cutting all of my half square triangles. And I do want you to note that they give you a die pick because you do get strings cut in that are into your board that may be hard to get out. And so you just run the die pick along the lines to get them out. And I'm just not going to clean it now. I'm just interested in cutting today. But just wanted to tell you why you have a die pick. So now we're back and we're ready to cut our two and a half inch squares. And this is from the eight inch strips that I cut off of my die. And I am just going to put my strips together so that I can die cut them both at the same time by fan folding. And I want to see where the label is. So the label is here. And again, I want to, and it doesn't be that the label has to be next to me. It just needs to be going into the machine facing me. So I can turn it this way and the label still would run through that way. So I can use my lines to put this onto my board. And I'm just going down a bit because I want to get rid of the salvage that's here. So that's why I'm over further than I would be. I'm down this way further than I would be. And now I'm just going to fan fold this back and forth. Try to get my strip a little bit straighter here. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm covering the die. So I want to come back past the die and do my fold and then go back up to the top. So now that that's in place, I'm holding it with this hand and smoothing with the other. And then I also want to bring it back down to me. And that will be my six layers for cutting. And again, I have extra room on my Go Big that I don't have to cut this. But if you're using a Go, you definitely want to trim this off. And I'll just go ahead and just whack this off for you. And we're going to run this through our cutter. Pull this off. And now this die, I just did six layers of fabric. And I am cutting nine at a time so i just cut 54 squares in one pass so i am going to go ahead and lift these off and i will run the other ones through even though i only need six i'm always looking for two and a half inch squares especially in my lights so i am just going to go ahead and continue to run all of this through even though i only need six Remember I told you that I was going to be using squares as well in my sashing for my Bear Paws blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these into two and a half inch squares as well. And I'm only going to show you on one set what I'm doing with these because they're all the same. Um, I'm going to, this is six layers so I can only put this on here once. I just want to make sure that I put it over my die blade. So I want to put it over this die blade here. And here's the die blade on the other side. I'm going to run another strip through. Just making sure that it covers the die blades. I am going to just move this up. I'm not going to cut. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this through. So I got my cut out, gonna slide my mat off, rotate it, and then you can see how I just cut those. I can just take my extra pieces that I'm going to be running in again, cut, take those off, 
and then just pull up my excess pieces. I always pull up what I don't want first just to get it out the way and then I go and pick up the pieces that I do want. And here I'm going to have some little stragglies that I'm going to have to get rid of later. But again, these are all of the extra squares and who can never have more two and a half inch squares? I'm not going to need but 60 squares of, well not 60 squares, I'm going to need 60 divided by four. <laughs> so about 15 squares. But I'm going to go ahead and cut them all anyway just because I know that I have a container where I store this type of stuff. And again, we're just going to run this through. The machine here. And pull off what I don't want. So I will continue with this. I have these two extra runs I have to go through here with. So I'm going to go ahead and end right here. I'm going to cut these last two sets that I have to cut and I'll be right back. Alright, so this is take two. I ran out of battery. Now it's time for me to cut my four and a half inch squares. And when I put this on here, I need to get three of these squares. So I want to make sure that I line them up just right. And uh, hopefully it will work. And I just want to run this through. Again, I want to run this so that the die and the lengthwise of grain is going in beside me. I'm also going to bunch that up so that it doesn't move on my die. I don't want to cut it this time because I need to salvage or save as much fabric as I can on these cuts. So here it is, rub it off, <laughs> slide down, and you can see I barely had any waste, I really washed where I put my die, and now I can take off my six squares, and I'm going to go ahead and just cut these sides off just to get them out of my way. And then I will continue that down my strip. So I'll leave you with me so we can see if I'm able to get all of my squares. Just putting it over just a slither. And I need to rotate and flip my mat. No, it's already been flipped and rotated because I can tell by the cuts. And hopefully we can get three. You never know. <laughs> And if I can't get three, then I have a plan B where I can use some of those two inch squares and make a four inch square just by piecing them and maybe even making it scrappy at the same time. So that's two and let's see if I can get one more cut. It's not going to work on some of my strips. I've got one, two three, four strips where it's very tight here. And I just didn't have enough length to get those three. So we'll go ahead and run this through. And what I'm going to do is leave the pieces for right now with the salvage in it so that I know I need to piece those. So I'm back and I have cut all of my pieces for 60 blocks and I am really excited about it. Um, this is going to be a project for my Quilt Gills retreat, so I'm looking forward to working on that, but I wanted to do pre-cutting so I wouldn't have to worry about uh, doing the cutting while I was in a Zoom meeting having to move my machine out the way. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed. Thank you.